Game Ranks presents 10 Best Obscure Horror Games. Yeah, we're going a little deeper this time, talking about all different kinds of obscure horror games ranging from a variety of different times in gaming. There's some cool spooky stuff here and we're excited to talk about it, so let's get started off with number 10. Master Reboot is an atmospheric, calm yet creepy under the surface kind of horror game. The game starts off innocent enough and slowly unfurls into this weird kind of techno horror game with mystery elements. While the graphics aren't top notch, the actual visual art design is really great and very inspired. The game does have jump scares, but they work for them, they really build towards them, and there's actually a lot of really effective and tense creepy moments. The one thing here is just the clunky, frustrating controls and gameplay that maybe isn't going to pull you in as much as the story and atmosphere will, but we think that's why it's still worth playing. And at number 9 we have Forbidden Siren 2. This is a Japanese PlayStation 2 horror game where you are on an abandoned island filled with spooky monsters. It sounds pretty typical, but it's anything but. There's a lot of characters and a ton of story here. It's just good old fashioned Japanese horror if that's your thing, once you get past the clunky trial and error style gameplay. It doesn't really do too much and it doesn't fix a lot of the issues from the original game, but if you're into Japanese horror it is so worth playing through just for that unique atmosphere, because that in itself is scary enough. And at number 8 we have Scratches. This weirdly named game is a 2006 atmospheric point and click adventure game. In the game you get to play as Michael Arthay, this famous horror writer author who needs seclusion and goes and writes his new novel in a spooky mansion. And then of course, the video game stuff happens. You get to explore this spooky Victorian home in an English town, and the game kind of has the vibe of like a horror mist. It's mist with spooky elements. And that's probably 50-50. Some of you are going to freak out at that or some of you are going to be bored to death. It's filled with a bunch of classic point and click adventure tropes like in the puzzles and stuff that you've probably seen before, but there's enough creepiness, weird music, and interesting story elements here to keep you hooked. It hasn't really aged well, it's probably aged the worst on this list, but we still think it's worth a try just because of its uniqueness. And at number 7 we have Nosferatu Wrath of Malachi. Now, Nosferatu Wrath of Malachi is a shock style horror first person shooter game. And the weird part about it for you movie fans, even though it's named Nosferatu, it's actually based on Bram Stoker's Dracula with some inspiration from F.W. Monroe's Nosferatu. The name of the game here is to search this creepy castle and save members of the main character's family within a one and a half hour time limit. The thing here is that the castle layout is randomly generated every single time. So this game really does the whole spooky horror thing, but it's also a pretty fun and engaging game to play. You know, it might look a little craptastic, but it's pretty cool. And the fact that the game is procedurally generated means the spooks and horrors just keep coming. I'm really, really sorry for that line. And at number six, we have The Path. This game is inspired by various versions of Little Red Riding Hood. The game starts out in an apartment and the player is shown like six different sisters to choose from and you have no information about them other than a name. And then the objective is to go to grandma's house. It's a really interesting setup and obviously the inspirational choices are really, really cool. The game's story is told through just exploring and examining objects you find on the ground in the world. The graphics are kind of weird and creepy and unsettling, but it's really interesting and it just looks and feels different than a lot of other horror games. And I think that's where it's most successful is it's how unique it is. It can get frustrating at times and maybe even a little monotonous, but I don't know, I just really like the fact that it's based on Little Red Riding Hood and the environments look so creepy. That's why I think it's worth a try. And at number five, we have Obscure. Obscure is about three teenagers who set out to search for their missing friend. Of course, since it's a spooky game, they find themselves locked inside a school overnight, and they have no choice but to figure out the mystery and get to the bottom of things. This game kind of reminds me of Alan Wake a little bit in terms of where the spooky ghosts in this game are sensitive to light and can be defeated by it. They're sensitive to light and direct sunlight can destroy them. In the game, you use flashlights to weaken the foes and the black aura surrounding them. The cool part is there is a two-player cooperative mode that is worth checking out because you don't really see that in horror games. Games. Something interesting that we like that the game does is it allows players to combine items like for example You can tape a flashlight to a firearm which you couldn't even do in the original version of doom 3 by the way Obscure does some cool things very well and that cooperative multiplayer thing is very interesting So that's why it earned a spot on our list and at number four we have Kuan This is a game that you can play on PC with an emulator It's based on the ancient type of Japanese horror story called Kawaida The game is set in a mansion in Kyoto during the high-end period of Japan this game is very much based around analog joystick movement. The amount you push down on the analog stick determines how fast your character moves, how much energy they use, and how much noise they make up that attracts enemies. This is the most important element of this game. Running around actually drains the character's health and attracts nearby enemies, and it's a big problem. The player can use meditation to restore their character's health, and use classic horror game tropes stuff like herbal medicines and holy water containers. And that's a really cool gameplay mechanic in and of itself, but the most unique thing here is the feudal Japan location. You're in this old school style feudal Japanese manor, and the mountains surrounding it, and it's all just mixed 
a really creepy setting. The game is filled with typical ghosts and zombies, but it's very fun to play. And at number three, we have Serena. Serena tells the story of a man who's waiting inside a cabin for his wife named Serena, but he can't remember anything about her. And you, as the player, explore the cabin and examine items and stuff around the house. As you, the player, move around the cabin and examine items and kind of get more of an idea and build up a story about the relationship you have with Serena, that's when his memories start to come back and when his and your feelings of her start to change. And that's where things get a little creepy. This is more of an emotional horror game. It's definitely not the scariest game on our list, but what it does is pretty interesting. Also, uh, it's free, so what do you want me to tell you? Check it out. And at number two, we have Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. Now, this game on our list is probably the least obscure on the list, but we wanted to mention it because we know some of you guys really love it, and it has a cult following for a reason. This GameCube game can be played with an emulator. You play as Alexandra Rovia, who is investigating her grandfather's murder. And a bunch of creepy shit happens, like you find a book bound to human skin, the called the titular Tome of Eternal Darkness, and the concept here is that you flash back to several time periods, such as ancient Rome. One of the most important elements of the game is keeping the main character calm, otherwise insanity effects come into play. This kind of messes with how the game looks and affects a lot of aspects that I don't really want to spoil. This is a great game with some really great horror elements and very interesting characters and it's just fun. It's cool. It's a great adventure. And I can't recommend it enough. You might not have a GameCube anymore, but a little birdie told me that the Dolphin emulator works pretty great right now. And at number one, the game that maybe isn't the most obscure on our list, but probably one of the best, is Lone Survivor. This game kind of flew a little under the radar, and I really hope it's never forgotten. But this is a really good one, okay? It's like a 2D survival horror adventure game with elements of Japanese horror. It's a game made by a very small team, and it's about the main character trying to escape from a city ravaged by a deadly disease, and it's just all fucked up. It sounds typical, but this cerebral, trippy presentation kind of takes things to the next level. The best way I can really describe it is that it's essentially Silent Hill 2 in 2D. It's got great pixelated visuals and really, really good sound and music. The game is really impressive in how it looks like a cutesy 2D pixelated game, yet it still manages to make you feel really alone, gross, confused, scared, and spooked. It's an incredibly impressive horror offering, and the fact that it's more of a survival horror style game means it's actually just a really fun video game to play. So that's why it's number one on our list and why you should check it out. So guys, those are 10 obscure horror games that we really enjoyed and wanted to recommend to you guys. We know there are plenty more out there, so we want to hear from you guys in the comments below. Do you love a horror game so much that you know no one's ever played before? I debated putting Clock Tower on this list because it's a really weird, creepy series that not a lot of people pay attention to. But the word obscure is kind of up for debate, so let's talk about it all down in the comments. What are some of your favorite weird offbeat horror games? If you like this video and you like us making horror videos, click the like button because that helps us out and it lets us do more. If this is your first time coming around, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.